Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to be showing you how you can use Passport in a multi-sig quorum using Sparrow Wallet. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be setting up a 2 of 2 multi-sig with Passport being one signer and Cold Card being the second signer. Using this setup to send any Bitcoin, a signature from both signing devices is required. The multi-sig quorum that you choose to set up is completely up to you. You could use a 2 of 3, a 3 of 5, a 5 of 7, it's completely up to you and your security preferences. You can use Passport alongside any other hardware wallet that Sparrow is compatible with in any configuration of multi-sig setup you like. Okay, so the first step is to set up the multi-sig configuration in Sparrow. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to head to File, New Wallet. Going to give this wallet a name. Press create wallet. We're going to opt for multi signature and then we're going to select our cosigners. In this example, we're using a two of two setup where we require two signatures from a possible two signers to be able to spend any Bitcoin. So first off, let's import our cold card wallet. So on the cold card, we're going to go to settings, multi-sig wallets, export, export. We're going to choose the account number. Generally speaking, this will be zero. And then OK. And that is going to export a JSON file that we are now going to import with Sparrow. So I'm going to insert the micro SD card into my computer and choose air gapped hardware wallet. Cold card multisig, we're going to opt to import file. Navigate to my micro SD card and choose that JSON file that we've just exported from cold card. There we go, we have cold card imported. Next up, let's import passport. I'm going to head across to key store 2. Choose air gapped hardware wallet. Then on passport, we're going to go pair wallet. Choose our account. Again, generally speaking, this will be zero, but you're free to choose any account you'd like. Down to Sparrow. This time we're going to choose multisig. We're going to choose QR code. Passport now says next scan the QR code on the following screen into Sparrow. So within Sparrow we need to choose Passport Multisig and opt for the scan option which is going to open our computer's camera. And then we're just going to scan the QR code presented by Passport. Okay, so we've got both of our signers imported into Sparrow. Next, we just need to hit apply. Again, we can choose an optional password to lock the access to this wallet within Sparrow. For this instance, I'm not going to set one. Okay, so we've set up the wallet within Sparrow. Now we just need to tell both of those signing devices about the other one. So what we need to do is export the Sparrow multisig file into each of our signers. So first of all, we're going to go down to export. We're going to choose cold card multisig and we're going to export the file. We're going to save that to our micro SD card. Then I can take that micro SD card out of my computer, pop that into the cold card. Still in the multi-sig menu, we're going to choose import from SD. Then we're going to choose the file that we just saved from our computer. Cold card is then going to ask you if you want to create a new multi-sig wallet. It'll tell you the policy. Again, it's two of two. But of course, this could be any quorum that you like. 
the process is exactly the same. You could do three or five, two or three, five or seven, completely up to you. I'll show you the derivation path and if desired, you can see the extended public keys. I'm just gonna tick that to go okay. So cold card is now aware of the multi-sig setup that we've just created. Let's do the same for passport. So we're gonna to go to export again. This time we're gonna come down and choose passport multi-sig and we're gonna choose show. That's gonna bring up an animated QR code which is essentially an encoded version of our multi-sig setup. On passport, we should be at the prompt screen saying to import the multi-sig configuration from Sparrow. If we hit continue, that'll open the camera. We can simply scan the QR code on screen. Again, we're gonna get a summary of the wallet. We can also press one to see the extended public keys, or we can continue to accept. To finish off the pairing process within Sparrow and Passport, we just need to hit go to the Receive tab and scan that with the camera on Passport. Passport's now confirmed that the setup is complete and it's asking if we want to create a new micro SD card backup to save this configuration. Okay, so that's our multi-sig quorum setup. Just a reminder, it's a two of two setup where we need a signature from both signers to be able to spend any Bitcoin. Receiving Bitcoin works exactly the way as it does with single signature. I'm just going to navigate to the Receive tab. Then you can either copy the address, click on this button here, or you can scan the QR code shown on screen. So I'm going to do that from one of my mobile wallets now. And within a couple of seconds, we should see the transaction show up within Sparrow. There we go. We head up to the transactions tab. We can see our unconfirmed transaction for 1 million sats. Just waiting for a confirmation on the blockchain. Okay, so we've received some sats into our multi-sig wallet. It's time to demonstrate a spend transaction. So we're gonna go to the spend tab, populate the address that we want to send to, Give the transaction a label. Enter the amount. Adjust the fee rate. Again, Sparrow will give us a breakdown of the transaction, how it looks with all of the inputs and the different outputs. Then we're going to hit create transaction. Again, advanced users here can uh, amend some of the more advanced um, parameters for the transaction. For this demonstration, I'm going to leave them all at default. Okay, so as you can see now, Sparrow is waiting for two signatures. Both are currently empty. So first off, we're going to sign with cold card. So we're going to opt to save PSBT. We're going to save it onto our call card micro SD. We've got the name of the transaction there and it's the .psbt file, partially signed Bitcoin transaction. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to inject that from my computer. Insert the micro SD card into cold card and choose ready to sign. I'm gonna pick the PSBT file that we've just set up. Call card's then gonna say okay to send. It's gonna give us the amount that we're sending and the address that we're sending it to. It's also gonna tell us the fee and how much change we're gonna get back and which address that's going to go to. 
I'm going to press OK to approve the transaction. Okay, so we should now have a signed PSBT file on our micro SD card. So we're going to take that out of call card now and pop that back into my computer. Okay, so we're going to go to load PSBT. Navigate to the micro SD card and look for the signed PSBT file. So here we have the name of the transaction and as you can see there it says dash part meaning that it's partially signed. So as you can see we now have one of the required two signatures. The next step is to sign with Passport. So we're going to use the QR code functionality for this. So we're going to go show QR code. On Passport I'm going to click sign with QR code and I'm going to scan. QR code on screen. Passport's going to give us a summary of the transaction now, so how much we're spending, the destination address, the change amount, and the change address. And finally, it's going to show us the network fee. Once we're happy, we can press sign. Passport is now showing an animated QR series, which is our signed transaction that we need to pass back to Sparrow. So we're going to choose scan QR and I'm going to hold that up to my computer's webcam. There we go. We now have two signatures from both of our signing devices, call card and passport. The transaction is now valid and we can broadcast it to the network. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a couple of useful tips for when dealing with multi-sig wallets on Passport. The first one is if you head to Settings, Multi-sig, and choose your multi-sig wallet, you can view the details at any time. This includes the each cosigner, its extended public key, and its wallet fingerprint. You can also rename or delete the wallet configuration. Additionally, you can also leverage the verify address feature. So just click verify address, choose your account. And if there is a multi-sig wallet associated with that account, you can just choose that on the next screen. Scanning the address in your chosen wallet software should result in an address verified confirmation screen if the address scanned is controlled by that multi-sig setup.